Hey everyone, I'm Rono and I'm the head of product at Prismic. So today with the team, we are going to introduce you to new features and new improvements that we've passed to the product. So those improvements are in a wide range of improvement to the page building experience, but also to the developer experience, like a new slice template for Next and Svelte Kit, but also allowing you, if you're not using Slice Machine, to upgrade to SM. On top of that, we'll show you new uh, features that we release on the SDK, uh, on the kit, and uh, introduce for you a new improvement that we are passing to the migration API, that is a, an API in beta that allows you to migrate programmatically your content uh, to Prismic. So this will be presented by the whole team, but uh, we'll start with Alex that is going to introduce you to the new support uh, of SvelteKit, so the SvelteKit V2, as we call it, that introduced the preview and all. Thanks, Renaud. I've got some great SvelteKit updates to fill you all in on. In case you missed it, last month we launched Slice Machine support for SvelteKit, and we launched all the features that you want or that you have in Next and Nux, except for two, and I've got an update on that today. So the first one is page snippets and I'll show you right here how that works. So you go into your page type, I got this uh, page page type and right up here we have page snippet and this makes it super easy for you to copy and paste all the code you need to build out your Prismic pages. So for SvelteKit you might know that there is a server component and a page component that you need to create. We've got the code for both so all you have to do is create the page at the spot that we say here and copy that code. I already have that file and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there, page.server. And then we've also got the page.svelte. I'm going to copy and paste that into the file I've made there. And really that is all you need to do. And now that will automatically fetch the data and render out the slices for that page all for you. The second thing that we launched without last month is full Prismic previews, and that will be coming within the next week or two. We've got a great solution for that. It's been tricky, but we've got a great solution, and make sure you're following us on Twitter or LinkedIn or something so that the day that comes out, you are the first one to hear about it because we're looking to get SvelteKit up to next and next in terms of all the features that we can support. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Comb, the product manager of the DevTools team. As you may have noticed, we recently shipped the Slice templates. The Slice templates for Next, so we release them for Next, they are pre-made slices that are used to fast track the creation of your first page within Slice Machine in Facebook. So for example, I created a home page here. And the way Slice templates work, that whenever you want to add a slice to your page, you can select a new slice, so blank slice, or you can use a Slice template. Slice template, so it's a, selection, a first selection of pre-made and pre-designed slices that you can choose and add to your to your page. For example, I choose the hero and customer logo and I click add. And boom, they are added to my page and the page is, is saved. So looking at the adoption for next, we realized that the, the, the users were liking them and using them um, quite a lot. And so we decided recently to port the slice templates to Next and SvelteKit. So that was the, the, the main thing that the, that the team released over the last weeks. But on another front, we are making progress toward the redesign, the full redesign of the Slice Machine UI. And the last step that, we, that we've been performing is to redesign all the Slice cards that you can see in Slice Machine. So all of these cards um, and the cards that you can see here and also all the components that you can see in the Slice page. Hey everyone, Lucy from the developer experience team here. So another exciting update for Slice Machine is the ability to upgrade to it for long-time Prismic users. As of today, part of you might still be blocked on the old custom type builder with old types and slices. Then we want to change that. We want to enable you long-time Prismic users to upgrade to modern Prismic so you can take advantage of a local development workflow while also getting you ready for the new page builder that we cannot wait to release to everyone else. So with this update, you can now initialize Slice Machine inside your old project. This will pull down your types locally so you can start working on them from there within Slice Machine. And talking about iteration and working on new things, Slice Machine will also now display your legacy slices within your custom types. And as you can see, you have now access to this new shiny button here, which says Migrate Legacy Slice. 
This button is the ability for you to upgrade your old slices to slices managed by Slice Machine so you can keep iterating on them. So here I have my Marketing Hero Slice, I can click Upgrade, and this will perform the upgrade for me. It will create a new component for this slice. And Slice Machine will also handle all the content migration for this slice so you don't lose any of your past content while doing this migration. The only thing that's safe for you to do from there is to wire back your code to this new slice managed by Science Machine. And one thing I really like about this new feature is that it's iterative. You don't have to migrate all your slices at once. You can just do like the ones that are the most important to you and do the other one later on. So this is coming really soon to Science Machine. So stay tuned to, to our Twitter, for example, or our blog to not miss the announcement. And with that being said, I'm handing over the mic to Guy from the Page Builder team. So I guess the focus for us has been around making sure that we support all the features that we currently have within the legacy editor so that people can use the new page builder, complete all the things that they want to do and be totally self-sufficient um, and enjoy the new team, uh, the new tool uh, that we've been um, working on over the last um, sort of year or so. So the priority has been finishing um, the different fields so making sure we support all the different um, types of content and things that you can do within prismic and so the last ones um, that we've been finishing off um, have been around the link so we now support in a link field um, a link to web page link to a prismic page uh, also known as content relationship and a link to media as well so the link to media you can now um, link to an item within your media library and we support those in a rich text as well. So you have your icon here, you have the link to a web page, link to a document, and um, you have a link to media in there as well, which is coming out today, which is pretty exciting. The other thing um, that we've been working on in the context of a link is we now support relative links. Um, so within the page builder, basically if you select a link to a web page, uh, you don't just have to copy and paste uh, a URL or write your URL but you can also write the relative path um, and then the relative link will work um, as part of that as well so if you write it in the UI for example if I write um, it's like something like dashboard slash guy um, you won't see the kind of highlight you won't get the hyperlink that you do with a normal web link um, but if you have that within the field it will work and you, you have your relative link um, one of the other things that um, we've been working on is uh, locales. So we now support locales in the page builder. So you see I have my little flag up here, um, ability to copy a locale here. Um, but one of the things that we recently added is basically um, if you have a content relationship field or like a link to a Prismic page, previously you could only link to pages within your locale. So you see I'm in my French locale here and I have a list of my French docs. Um, but what you can now do is you can now select other locales you have in the repo. So if you want to link to something in your um, US locale, then you can do that um, as well. One of the last things um, that we've been working on is uh, you'll notice in the new page builder, we're not yet supporting um, releases. So being able to schedule your publish for a release or um, schedule it for a specific date and time. So working on that right now, coming very soon. Um, but one of the first steps in terms of enhancing the publishing experience and things like that, is we're now supporting the ability to unpublish. Um, so basically you'll see when you're in this green publish status here, you have a little button in the top right hand corner. And if you click that, you simply unpublish your document and um, yeah, archive and that's pretty much it. So we have lots more exciting things to come um, this quarter again, making sure we're supporting a lot of the features that currently exist within Prismic, but also trying to make things better, improve the experience um, and make the page builder something that's really awesome for all of our users and fosters their creativity, helps them publish more pages and um, yeah, unlocks creativity, growth, all those awesome things. So that's it for me today. So I'll pass to Elena, who's the product manager of the agency team, and she's going to talk to you about some updates um, coming from her team. I want to share with you a new feature that we've just launched for our migration API in beta, and that is the ability to link multi-language versions of your document via the API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating my English version and I'm going to need the ID that I see right down here in order to link 
that English version with my French and my German versions. I'm going to insert that ID right here on the property that's called alternate language ID. And I'm going to go ahead and send in order to create my document. I'm going to do the same thing on my German version. And we're going to see here in my my repository in my in my page builder that I've got my English language version and I've also got the French and the German version attached to it. So now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Angelo. Hey, I'm here to share three new updates to our open source libraries. The first update is for our Prismic client library, which is a library you'll use to query your content in your applications. We've added support for four new errors, which will help you handle any failed cases when you're querying for your content. We've added support for ref not found, ref expired, repository not found, and preview token expired. These four new errors join the existing errors we've had, which are not found, parsing, forbidden, and the generic fallback error, prismic error. You can get access to these new errors by updating to, updating to the latest version of prismic io slash client. Next, I'd like to show you another update to the prismic client library. The as HTML helper, which helps you convert rich text fields into HTML strings, has been updated to support um, a shorthand for applying class names and other HTML attributes you, can, you want to add to the output. In the past, you would have to write a function that output an HTML string along with the class names that you wanted to attach to it. In the latest version, you can use an object syntax instead to quickly add class names and other attributes. If I wanted to change the, the color of this heading to, for example, I can just add another class name to this object, such as text red 500. And there it is. And that would be equivalent to, in this first one, uh, in the old version, to writing text green 500. So you can see the new shorthand method is indeed shorter. You can get this with the latest version of Prismic Client. The last update I'd like to share with you has to do with the Prismic Rich Text Library. This is probably an update that won't affect you as it's a low level library used in our other libraries like the Prismic, Vue, and Svelte SDKs. But if you're using this library, then listen up. We've deprecated the Prismic Rich Text Library and move that logic into the Prismic Client Library instead, just to consolidate all of the libraries that we have um, we have published. Um, luckily, the migration is very easy. All you have to do is change your rich text library imports into the client library import instead. So you can change this to client slash rich text, and everything else will work exactly as it did before. I hope you enjoyed this format. We are releasing a video like this every month so that you can see what we are working on and what are the progress. You can uh, refer to the video of September if you want to see what we shipped last month and uh, we'll meet again uh, in a month. See you there.